Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on faster editing inside Final Cut Pro 10. You know, I was thinking it's one thing to showcase technology. It's another to showcase how technology helps us at our core job, which is telling stories. So in this episode, what I want to do is I want to tell a short story through an interview and walk through the process of how that works, and more importantly, show you faster ways that we can get that whole editing process completed. That's our goal. Let me show you how it works. By the way, we have a new subscription service. All of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes both Final Cut Pro 10 and our brand new Adobe Premiere CS6 training, plus our Autodesk Smoke training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. For more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. What I want to cover today is to present ways that we can edit more efficiently within the context of editing an interview with a guest, B-roll, and a title. Along the way, we're going to review the editing process, review the trimming process, and show how to add and animate titles. So, let me show you how to review and mark clips faster. Edit clips to the timeline. This includes clips to the primary storyline, connected clips, connected storylines, and titles. We'll trim clips using the precision editor, and I'll also explain when you don't want to use it. And we'll wrap up by creating a title and animating it. So what I've got here is an interview that was shot in 2004 with Dr. Vint Cerf. He works at JPLs on the board of directors at Google, probably not single-handedly, but close to it, invented the Internet. The man is a mathematician by training, and I'm grateful to Dr. Cerf and alcatel Lucent for allowing me to use this footage. We were having a conversation back then in Van Nuys High School about having kids stay in school and to study math and science. But along the way, he did a short discussion on how the Internet was being used in outer space, specifically for Mars explorations. And this is really fascinating even today, seven, eight years later. And I want to create an interview from it. So here I've got all of my interview clips that I shot with him. This was shot, by the way, with Beta SP. It was 2004 after all. But the process, whether we're working standard def or high def, is still the same. So I've got all these clips. In fact, I've got far more clips than I'm ever going to be able to use. How do I find the ones that I want? Well, what I did is, as I was bringing this stuff in, I started to apply keywords to a clip. For instance, here, let's, uh, there's a shot where he's doing room tone. Let's switch to this view, and we can see a list of all the different clips that Dr. Surf has. And one of these is room tone, where we're all just sort of standing around, staring at each other, recording the sound of the room. A little weird, but really, really, really useful in editing. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've applied keywords to each of these. To do that, you click on the key icon. I've applied keywords to indicate wide shots and close-ups, those where he's giving a speech to the students at the school, where he's talking about outer space. Let me create another one where we'll just call it room tone. And I've got the clip selected here, and I just simply click room tone, and that room tone keyword is now applied. You can apply keywords to a single clip or a group of clips, which is exactly what I did. When I switched to here, I looked through, switching our switch and making our screens a lot smaller. I looked at all the close-ups and highlighted them. I said, here's a close-up. Hold the Command key down and click on those which were close-ups and don't click on those which are wide shots. I opened up the keyword editor, simply clicked the close-up keyword, and all those selected clips had the keyword applied. The cool thing is, is that now I can say, show me my close-ups, or those shots that have room tone, or those shots that are wide shots, or those shots where he talks about outer space. Well, I've now narrowed this to three clips, but one of the limitations we've got with Final Cut 10 is that we don't have the ability to set an in and an out inside each clip. Whenever I click on it, let's say that I grab the start and drag it to here and grab the out and the end and drag it to there. As soon as I click on a different clip, it forgets that setting on the first clip. Drives me completely nuts. <laughs> I thought that I've shared with Apple on more than one occasion. But there's a workaround, and let's just take a look at, uh, for instance, here. We'll make these clips bigger. 
I want to find those clips that are relevant to outer space. So this first one is he describes what he discovered. Notice that I've got the start set here and the end at the very end of the clip. If you want to jump the playhead to the start, type Shift I. Shift I jumps your playhead to the start. Shift O jumps your playhead to the end. So I'm going to type Shift I and spacebar. Intranaut, or internaut, and one of the fathers of the internet. In brief, what were you doing? Well, in simple terms, uh, I was at Stanford University and I was doing research with one of my colleagues trying to figure out how to build a system that allowed an arbitrary number of computer networks to be interconnected together. And basically what he did back in the 1970s is he invented the TCP IP protocol, which is nice, but 1970s is not necessarily outer space. It's a good clip, talks about what he did, but no, I'm going to rule that one out. Let's take a look at this one here. Again, shift I. So what's coming up? Where's the future? There are some really exciting things coming on the internet. You can see the leading edge of this already. I mean, okay, so we're starting to get there, but then I drilled down into one more question talking about outer space, looking at the future of the internet. And so here, let's uh, again play that. In another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. All right, now we finally have got the quote that we want. So what I did is I can't simply set the in or the out and then have it remembered from one clip to the next, but I can use these favorites. Notice that I've got several different color bars up here. The purple bar at the bottom indicates that some form of analysis has been performed with the clip. The blue bar indicates that keywords are applied to the clip. And the green bar indicates favorites are applied to the clip. And now just to illustrate this process, let me just pretend for a moment. I'm going to pretend that the start of my shot is so, let's be nicer to him, is right there. And let's pretend that the end of my shot is right there. Now, I haven't listened to it. I've done that on the first clip, but not this one. Let's just pretend that's the start. Click the green star, and notice a green favorites icon appears over the top. If you decide that you don't want that, click the hollow star, and that favorite goes away. If you decide this is absolutely a shot that you will never need, or a portion of the shot you'll never need, click the red X, and that says it's rejected. And I'll show you how to work with that in just a second. Notice, for instance, that this is Surf talking about the interplanetary internet. And there's exactly one clip where he's talking about the interplanetary internet. But I've highlighted the middle of the clip with a rejected flag. If you go up to this top left menu and say hide rejected, all of the rejected clips or portions of a clip are hidden. And notice now I have two interplanetary internets. Why? Because this is the portion of the clip before the rejected section. This is the portion of the clip after the rejected session. You can now have the rejected get rid of all the pieces that you don't want to see. Or, more interestingly, let's go back to all clips. We'll highlight this. Click this. Notice the red bar is gone because this takes off favorites. This takes off rejected. Now I'm going to go back to our thumbnail view, and this time I want to have it show all my favorites. Now what I did is I went through this first clip and found wherever he talked about outer space. And now let's take a listen, because we're starting to drill down, starting first with keywords, then with favorites. I'm starting to isolate on that part of the story that I want to tell. Let's take a listen to what he has to say. In another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, We've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. Okay, so that's a really nice way to start. How about this next one? Click here, Shift-I. That's not what we're doing. What we're saying is that we want to standardize the communications standards, the protocols that are used in space, because if we do that, each time we launch a new mission to go to Saturn or Jupiter or one of the outer planets or around Mars, if there are existing communications assets that are already out there from an earlier mission, we can use them because of the standardization. That's why the Internet has grown so Okay, it's a little sloppy. I've got more than I need at the beginning, more than I need at the end, and a chunk in the middle I want to get rid of. But I like a lot of that. Let's take a listen to this one. Already on the Internet today. But what we'd like to do is to make the space exploration effort supported in the same way as we've been able to support communications terrestrially. Okay, another good quote, and let's try this last one. 
If you hit the home key, it always goes up to here. I'm used to hitting the home key. That's why we keep highlighting that shift I to the beginning of the clip. I mean, it's, it's, at the speed of light, it's 20 minutes one way for a radio signal to get from Earth to Mars when the two are farthest apart in their orbits. That means okay, now we see the problem. Let's start to cut a story together. We're going to start with this shot here. And let's make sure we've got the right end, so shift I. In another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. Okay, that whole clip is fine. We could edit this by dragging down to the timeline, but frankly, dragging is for the weak. It takes too long. There's got to be a faster way. I could click this button, which works great. It does an append edit, so I could just click down here and append the shot down to the timeline. Perfectly okay, but I am just too impatient. Type the letter E for append. I have no idea why. The letter E for an append edit, and it edits the clip down to the timeline. So now I've got the first shot. In another role. That and I've got the end of the clip. The internet. But it'd be nice to watch my audio levels because he was recorded soft. The audio meters are turned on by clicking this little icon or double clicking this icon or just swearing at that icon until it finally shows up. There we go grab the border here, drag it out just a bit. When I play this, Propulsion Laboratory, way too soft. Click, hold, and drag the volume. Let's pull it up. Six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension. At least we can hear it. Six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension. Of the now, I care a lot about his audio. When I'm doing an interview, I always build what's called the radio cut first. I want to hear the story, then I'm going to go back and edit pictures. So for me, it's a three-pass operation. First, build the radio cut so the sound is correct. Second, add B-roll and pictures to illustrate. And third, add titles. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's go to the second shot, Shift-I. That's not what we're doing. What we're saying is... Okay, let's just set an in there. ...is that we want to standardize the communications standards, the protocols that are used in space, because if we do that... Okay, we're going to set an out there. And if I type the letter E, even though my playhead is not at the end of the clip, it automatically puts the clip at the end of a clip. I like that part. I don't have to worry about my playhead. Space planetary bar. extension of the internet. Okay, we got to bring him up. So just I don't worry about a mix. I just worry about audibility. Planetary extension of the internet is that we want to standardize. Okay, so let's just hear that again. Planetary extension of the internet is that we want to stand. Okay. We want right about in there. So double click the edit point. It opens up the precision editor. The precision editor allows me, here it is, allows me to compare the out of the first clip, that's the top, with the in of the second clip. And as I drag back and forth, it goes to a two-up display. Now that two-up display is determined by a preference setting up here in Final Cut. See where it says show detailed trimming feedback when you're in the editing tab? When that's checked and you're in the precision editor, as you drag one clip back and forth, you're going to be able to see the two shots. Now let's just preview this. The internet. The thing is that we want... Now I've got to bring that back. And there's a keyboard shortcut, shift question mark. What we're saying is that we want to standardize... Okay, so we're almost there. Let's just back that up a bit. And no, that's not what we're doing. What we're saying... Okay, now, up arrow. By the way, to get back into it, double click it. To get out of it, just press the return key. I got a little carried away there. Let's preview. Shift, question mark. Military extension of the Internet. And what we're saying is... Okay, almost, except I'm getting just a piece of the and. So let's select that edit point and type period. That trims us one frame at a time to the right. Comma trims us a frame at a time to the left. Shift, comma, trims us five frames left. Sorry, that's 10 frames. Shift period shifts us 10 frames to the right. So comma, one frame left, shift, comma, 10 frames left. Period, one frame right, shift period, 10 frames right. And let's just play that again. Shift question mark. What we're doing, what we're saying is... Now let's press the return key, see what that sounds like. ...of the Internet. What we're saying is that we want to standardize... Okay. Now what I'd like to do is it's a little bit tight. ...extension of the Internet. What we're saying is... It's not bad. Select the position tool, and let's just grab the position tool and drag the clip a little bit to the right. 